City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the Word of Faith. Hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jesse Rich. Honored and delighted and glad you tuned in today. Let's read Bibles here in Mark chapter 11. Now, we're reading Scripture from the Word of God to build up our spirit man. Renewing our mind in God's Word and feeding our faith on God's Word. Now, Jesus said here in this verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, Usually one of the biggest reasons a person didn't get this to work for them, this is verse 23, when they spoke to a problem in their life, they thought, well, I'll try this. Well, first of all, we're not triers of the word as believers. We're, we're never told try to do it. We're doers of the word. Remember James 1.22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. And Jesus taught us there in, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23 through 27, it's the person that does what he says to do. Gets it to work for him. You know, the storm doesn't take him out. And another reason is that people really don't believe what they say is the truth. In other words, they lie. And we, we're not to lie about anything. So as a believer, these are, this is something we need to work on. We need to believe that when we say something, we're going to do it. Or what we say is the truth. Someone asks us the question, you know, how, how do I look with this suit on or dress or tie or, you know, do I look like I've done this or done that, weight-wise? Well, now, <laughs> if you're going to tell them the truth, then you've got to tell them the truth or just don't answer the question. But lying, then the person knows that what they say really they don't believe. It affects your spirit, man, whether people realize it or not. Not only we're not to let any corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth, we're to be people of our word. And this is something that all of us have to work on. You know, none of us have been perfect at it, but we need to strive for perfection. And then Jesus went on to say in this verse 24, Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, shall have them. Now, whether you get this prayer to work for you or not is going to depend more on you than it is God. He's already told what his will was. He let us know that he wished above all things that we prosper, that we have good health. In 3 John verse 2, Jesus himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses and by his stripes are healed in Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24. Those are promises that God gave us so we could base our faith on. But there's been so much doubt and unbelief taught that people almost had more faith in the sick and disease and the poverty and doubt and unanswered prayers than they did the Word of God. Now, if you find yourself in that kind of situation, then just double up and triple up on your word time. Usually, what's going on here is the person's not put enough time in the word. And so they need to increase their word time. Start out every morning in the word. First of all, just praise God and worship God. And then read promises of God's word. Try to put like an hour every morning in the word. Even though how busy you are, got a lot of things going on, that may mean that you know, we have to go to bed a little bit earlier and get up a little bit early. But whatever, work it out. Because the more time a believer puts in the Word, the more effective they're going to be at spiritual results. It's time the Word. Putting the time the Word. Putting the Word first place. That's putting God first place. If we believe that God and His Word are one, and they are, then we need to respect His Word. You know, over here in the, in the book of, of Luke, please go over there with me, in Luke chapter 10, now the scripture says here in verse 38, the Bible says here, Jesus, about Jesus and his, his ministry. Now it came to pass as they, as they went, they, that they entered in a certain village, a certain woman named Martha received in her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard the word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to Jesus and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, she come and help me. And Jesus answered said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary shows in that good part which should not be taken away from her. Now, what did Mary do? She chose to hear the word, put time in the word, as Jesus ministered. 
The Bible said in Luke chapter 5, verse 1, they came to hear the word. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus found the places written and quoted from Isaiah 61, verse 62. I mean, there's no New Testament or Gospels then. So he's using the Old Testament. And he ministered the word. He taught the word. He cast out the devils with his word. The Bible says he confirms his word with signs following in Mark 16, 20. And by doing the word, we get strengthened, hearing and doing the word. Well, now, now here's Mary and her sisters, let's say in the kitchen. I don't know how the houses were then, but she's cooking. She's preparing the food. Now, this isn't like we got all the instant stuff today. I mean, I don't know how much was entailed here, but I guarantee there's some work to it. Well, now, it'd take Mary just the nerve to sit there and keep listening. Finally, Martha gets so frustrated that Mary's not helping. She comes in and, and, and tells Jesus about it <laughs> and probably has no idea that Jesus is going to say what he's going to say. Martha, Martha. Think about this. He called her name twice. They are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary's chosen it. You see, Martha wasn't putting the word first. She's putting hospitality and good works first. Well, eventually you get so you can't even do that. Because the devil will come in and take advantage of your weakness if you become spiritually weak. Well, we want to stay, we want to get spiritually strong and stay spiritually strong. Remember in 1 Peter 2 2, the scripture says, As newborn babes desire the sins of miracle that you may grow thereby. Well, we're to have a desire and a hunger for the word. And putting time in the word, feeding on the word, meditating on the word is something we need to do. Now here and, and maintain it. You know, this isn't just something, well, you know, I graduated in Bible school and seminary and I know all the Bible. No. no. No, you don't talk about God's word that way. I mean, you have, may have a lot of historical facts in your head, but it's getting the word inside your spirit. A lot of people mentally believe Jesus is Lord but they don't have him in their heart. And there's a big difference to have, believe in mentally, mentally ascending, mentally agreeing that Jesus is Lord and having Jesus in your heart. Now here in, in Psalms, please go over there with me, the first Psalm, and let's read here what the Scripture says here. Begin here in verse 1, Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not as counsel the ungodly, nor stand the way of sinners, nor see the seeds cornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And the law, that's the word, in the law doth he meditate day and night. Well, not only delights in it, but he meditates on it. See, that's part of doing the word. He could have just heard people share the word, or yeah, I've, I've heard that word, or that verse, we'd call it today. That's not enough. It goes on and says here, And he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water to bring forth fruit in season, his leaf also not wither, and what he do, whatsoever he does to prosper. Now, all of us want the prosperity. But this person's putting time in the Word. And it goes on and says here, The ungodly are not so, but they're, they're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. See, the circumstances are controlling them. They're up and down. They're not in control of the circumstances. Because they're not meditating on the Word day and night. And just taking a verse of Scripture to bed with you, and just keep quoting it to yourself. Getting up and reading the scriptures every morning. Is it a lot of work? Well, it sure beats all the catastrophes that Satan has planned for every person. Thank God you can do it. And you want to do it. Now he goes on and says here, the scripture says in verse 5 of Psalm 1. We're reading Psalm 1, verse 1 through 6. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand the judgment, nor sin is in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Well, the way to success is to meditate on the Word. Now, here in, while we're over in this area, here in Joshua, please go back to the left, in Joshua chapter 1. Now, here's God telling Joshua that I've already given you the land, for, you know, him and the children of Israel. The Scripture says here in verse 3 of Joshua 1, Every place so of your foot should tread upon, that have I given you. Not... I'm going to give it to you when you get over there. I've already done it, as, as I said to Moses. Now, verse 8, this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, here's where the work comes in. This book of law, Joshua, this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Sounds like Psalm 1 now. 
Thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe according to all that is written there. See, if we're not in the Word every day and putting that kind of time in God's Word, we'll forget what the Word says and we won't be doing the Word. I mean, Satan's a deceiver. He's got some of God's elect believing that, you know, I don't need to do this. And see, when those thoughts come to us, that's deception. person starts becoming cold. They're no longer sensitive to the Spirit of God. Every scripture we know to do, to not do it is sin. So we need to keep on working on it. We're always working on our spiritual life, growing spiritually, developing spiritually. Now, if God can get Joshua to do this, it's going to be Joshua's final decision to do this or not. If God can get Joshua to do this, look at the outcome of this. That thou mayest observe to according to all those written there. For then, after you do this, Joshua, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Now, how's Joshua going to become strong and be very good, courageous, and be very courageous like God told him? Meditating on the word day and night, not letting the word depart out of his mouth. Now, when a person starts talking religion or talking about, you know, historical things about the Bible, they're not talking promise. They're not talking covenant. And they're, they're getting uh, off course. Because Jesus talked the word. He ministered the word. He used the word purposely. Cast out spirits with his word. Ministered the word. Was anointed by the Holy Spirit to teach the word. People came to hear the word. And now that, that's our sole number one priority in life is to hear the word and do the word as believers. Then we've got a promise of success, good health, and prosperity. And as we take the time to fellowship in God's word, meditating on the word, this is what Mary got a hold of. Mary chose, no matter what her sister's going to say or do, she's going to sit there and hear the word. And see, people will put, try to put so much guilt and condemnation on you because you're putting time in the word. Now there's other stuff that have to be done, needs to be done. But you realize if you put God first, now you got him helping you do the stuff. You, you ever be doing a job, you can just tell you wouldn't well, get too much help from God on it. And when you put the word first and you put time in prayer, it's amazing how much more you can get done in one day. Then you could, that if you, it's just like tithing. It's how, mu how much more you can do at the 90% when you've given God the first 10% as opposed to if you keep the whole 100%. Just doing the word works. That's why God gave us his word. He knew what worked. He knew how success would come. Jesus purchased all these blessings and benefits for us. They belong to us. But what you're doing with the word is you're keeping yourself fully persuaded, fully convinced, fully confident that they belong to you in Christ Jesus. And by staying with the word, meditating on the word, though it's work, See, meditating on words is taking a word, a scripture, a verse, and just say it to yourself over and over again. Like at night till you fall asleep. You may wake up, go back to the same thing over and over again. I'll just take scriptures and carry them with me. So if I'm someplace and there's some time going by that, you know, that I'm in whatever, whatever I'm waiting for, just pull those out and reread them. Quote in the word. Be sitting in the office waiting for your appointment. Waiting for, you know, get your hair cut or whatever it may be. There's some time there. If you're on the subway, you're in a cab, you're on a bus, you're on a train, you're on a plane, whatever it may be, in a car, you know, you can be listening to the Word. And while you're listening to the Word, you'll be quoting the Word. You can shut your CD player off and just go back to speaking the Word yourself. See, people waste so much time by doing other things. And then when they need to get faith or need faith, the faith won't be there. See, it's not what God can do that we're going to get in life. It's what we can believe that we receive when we pray. See, again, Jesus said there in Mark 11, 24, Therefore I say to you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, if our spirit man's low, he's going to be unable to believe God like he should. When your spirit man becomes weak, you have a tendency now to let your flesh control you, your carnal nature, your mind, good intentions, good ideas. And see, people get off track following God by following their head. See, whatever comes in your head doesn't mean it's from God. You want to go back to the Word and know in your spirit what God wants done. Listen to your heart. Obey God. 
So just getting over your emotions and think this is something good to do. What, is it, what has God told you to do? And part of submission is doing what God wants done. You know, over here in the book of James, it's after Hebrews. If you find Hebrews, just keep going your right to James chapter 4. Now, the Bible says here in James chapter 4, now here in verse 6 and verse 7, but he, God, giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, how are we going to get Satan to flee? How are we going to get Satan to obey us as believers? Well, by submitting to God. Not, re not being rebellious to what God told us to do. Not being hard-hearted. See, this is what happened to many times in the children of Israel. They begin to rebel against God. God told them, I've given you land, it flows of milk and honey. In Numbers 13, they head over, you know, send over the, the, the 12 spies, and they come back, and 10 of them say we can't, and other two said we can. Caleb and Joshua said we can. And people acknowledge, yeah, there's, there, there, you know, flows of milk and honey, here's a cluster of grapes from it. Took two men to carry. Nevertheless, they saw the walls and the giants. See, they're not talking about God. They're talking about what they see. Now, these are people who had a covenant with God and saw God to do mighty miracles. But they got off. Caleb and Joshua didn't. And Caleb and Joshua stood in faith for 40 years till they got to go in the land. And thank God for that. And Caleb's strength is still renewed. He's able to climb a mountain. He's 80-some years old. But he kept staying with God, talking faith, believing God, not giving up, not departing the faith. But others did, and it cost them their life. See, they got so out of control, they thought, well, what we're going to do is just select another captain. But they don't realize that God had given Moses to them. This was God. Moses was God's idea. But see, they're going to rebel against this. So this walking by sight spun way out of control. Not only are they talking about how big the mountains are, how big the giants are, and we're grasshoppers in their sight. And that we, then they go and cry all night long in Numbers chapter 14 and decide they're going to get another captain. Well, but this is the one God shows. See, they're not submitting to God. They're not submitting to Moses. And Caleb and Joshua were unable to get the people to act on God's word. A lack of persuasiveness, well, these people's doubt and unbelief. And so they're going to stone these guys. And that's when God intervened. And they got to the place that the ten spies and the other people, the congregation, would to God we died in wilderness. Would to God we got we died in Egypt. We got ten of the twelve spies that are telling the people we can't do it. We got two guys out of the twelve that say we can. They chose to go by the majority, and they were wrong. They should have went by what God said. I've given you the land. You've got to go possess it. See, God would be with them. But he's not with them now in their rebelliousness. He loves them, but he's not honoring what they're doing when they're going to reject Moses. This is who God chose. See, some people, they don't pray about what church they go to. They just go there as long as they feel like they should go. And when they decide for whatever reason comes up, they bail out and leave. And not hearing from God, if they're going where they're supposed to be going at the time, God would have to let them know differently if he, if he wanted them to leave. Submitting to God's will can be real hard on the flesh. And you'll know in your spirit that God wants you to stay somewhere. When your flesh and your mind and your friends and loved ones are doing all they can to get you to get out of it, they'll talk you out of leaving your marriage, leaving your ministry, leaving your church that God told you to do or that God puts you in. Yeah, but they don't treat me right. Well, see, but that's no indication to leave. Jesus was never treated right, but he didn't just say, to heck with this, I'm out of here. Jesus is going to go to the cross, and before all that, he's going to through, go through all that ridicule, all that persecution, all those accusations. I mean, here's someone that's never done anything wrong. 
And he didn't quit because he knew what God wanted done. And see, loving God, loving his word is going to help you stay stable because that temptation to come to quit will come strongly, very convincingly. And you'll have, if you inquire of enough people, they'll tell you, well, one thing about it, you sure did your best to believe God. And God wants you happy. And it's just probably time for you to move on. But, you know, as you pray, there's someone that dwells in you if you're born again, the Spirit of God. And he'll let you know you can't leave. Just because people aren't treating you right and because things didn't go the way you'd hoped they would go, and because circumstances seem to be impossible and situations, we don't make any decision based on our feelings or emotions or this is just a real good opportunity. We're not opportunity led as believers. We're led by the word and by an inward witness. There's a way that will seem right to a person, but it's not right, but it seemed right. It's going by what the, they have in their heart, having peace. The peace of God, the pastor and understanding will help us make decisions. And every day we're faced with decisions. And there'll be things in your heart that God would do with you about that you may be practicing in life that he doesn't want you to do. So he's going to help you get out of it if you really look to him to help you. You know, you change your whole life with your mouth. The first thing, you begin to talk to things. Maybe you've been trying to lose weight. And you decide, you know, that you should just cut out the, the pastries, let's say. Well, now, with God's help and by your faith confession out your mouth based on God's word, you can open up your Bible to Mark chapter 11, verse 23, where Jesus said, For verily I say in you that whosoever saying this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast to sea, and should not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which say it's going to pass, he shall whatsoever he saith. And you make a commitment, God, I'm not going to eat any pastries, you know, the rest of the day or the rest of this week. I mean, you start out with something and build yourself up. Then you get a place you can go a day by doing it. I mean, if this seems to be a problem. Or uh, you get to a good place you can go a week without doing it. Now you're gaining momentum. It's going to, you know, and God's helping you do it. But it's, it's very important. If we're going to turn that ship... <clears throat> Then we got to get and steer the rudder in the way we want it to go. If we want to steer, if we want to get the car change directions, we got to get a hold of the steering wheel. Well, our tongue and our mouth, our body is going to go way of it. And by keeping our word, you know, don't, don't step out and do something that you know you're not going to keep. Start out with what you can believe you can get through. If you're trying to quit smoking, or drinking, or anything that's you know that in your heart you're supposed to get victory over this. Well, <clears throat> it starts out by what you say out your mouth. And God will help you get through moment by moment. But it takes integrity in God's word and your own words. So taking scripture like Mark eleven twenty three 23, and just keep reading, reading it to yourself, quoting yourself over and over again, is going to help you, remind you that you have what you say. And before you say something foolishly that you know you won't keep, you'll think, no, wait a minute. I'm a person of integrity. I keep my word. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, say what I know I can believe God for. And you start out with just the faith that you've got in Jesus' name. I mean, if you, if you could just go an hour without smoking, you start out with that. And say in Jesus' name, I'm a, I won't smoke anything for an hour. And I'm believing God to help me. And his power will help you get through it. Now, in the natural, the devil's going to know he can. And, 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 you know, and the flesh and your mind to keep you from doing it. But just take that scripture and just keep reading to yourself. And take scripture like Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ strengthen. Instead of looking to somebody else to get your deliverance for you, Jesus already got it for you. According to Colossians 1, 13, we've already been delivered. He's delivered from the power of darkness and translated us to the king of his dear son. We're already redeemed, and according to Galatians 3.13, and healed because of 1 Peter 2.24, and prosperous because of 2 Corinthians 8.9. And it just starts out with that mustard seed of faith you got to believe God for it. And just keep working on it. God's here to help us. As a, as a believer, he dwells in you, and he'll encourage you. But reading the Word, meditating on the Word, reading a verse of Scripture over and over and over again to yourself, no matter what your mind understands it or not, 
you want to stay with it. You know, over about that, go over here to Proverbs 3. Because sometimes your mind can be your biggest enemy because it, it's never done this before and it doesn't like doing it. It always wants to read something new or hear something new. So here in Proverbs 3, the scripture says there in verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to their understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall, he shall direct thy paths. Now who's going to do this? God will. And you don't have to lean to your own understanding. When you hear yourself saying, well, I don't understand that. You don't have to understand it. If it's God and his word, just believe it. Work on the believing part. And scriptures that you're not, you know, too familiar with and you just heard, you don't have to understand them. Just start doing them. I don't understand. How will God pay my bills if I tithe? Well, you don't have to understand that. You just have to believe his word. And he's the one that said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, Bring all the tithes to the storehouse. There may meet my house. And prove me now here with say, Lord of hosts. If I went out the windows of heaven, pour you out blessing, there shall not receive them. And I rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall throw the fruits of your ground. And in this vine cast fruit, time filled, say, Lord of hosts. And all nations call you blessed. For each blessed man, say, Lord of hosts. And just building your faith on those will help you immensely financially. And by submitting to God, doing what his word says to do, now you know God's with you in your circumstances because you've done his word. You don't have to understand how he's going to do it. Those thoughts will come to you. Your job is just to cast them down and not let the doubt and unbelief take over. And just going back to the word and meditate on God's word. This is what's going to help you become strong. Spiritually speaking, you'll be much more effective in prayer. You'll be much more effective at believing God. See, too many Christians were ineffective about believing God. And they came up with some kind of religious idea that sort of pacified their mind why they didn't get it. So just go in the Word of God and find out why they didn't. And getting a blunt answer, they chose the other way. I want to encourage you, read the Word every day. Mark those scriptures in there, highlight it, memorize it. Come to our service we got. Till next time, this is Pastor Jesse Rich. We love you, praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith, the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237-170, New York, New York, 10023. For additional information, church location, or upcoming seminars in your area, visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com. Um... Attention. If you currently do not get health insurance through your employer, or if you do not have health insurance, or if you just got divorced or married, had a baby, moved, or lost your health insurance coverage, listen closely. You are eligible for a new health care plan using Health Insurance America. A family of four can make up to $97,000 a year and still qualify for a new health care plan. Get coverage for doctor visits, prescriptions, hospital, dental, and vision for as little as $25 a week with co-pays as low as zero dollars health insurance rates have nearly doubled in the last three years stop paying the rising cost of traditional major medical and learn how health insurance america is saving people thousands of dollars a year on their health care plans don't waste hours on the phone or on a government website talk to a live health care consultant right now Call 1-800-946-4971. That's 1-800-946-4971. 1-800-946-4971. Liberty Bank is Connecticut confident and proud to sponsor Work in Connecticut, airing Tuesdays on Fox 61 News. The segments feature local businesses that are growing, thriving, and making a difference in our Connecticut communities. Work in Connecticut, hashtag CT confident. Sponsored by Liberty Bank. Find your confident place. Breaking news. Weather and traffic. Expect more from Fox 61 Morning News weekdays from...